Welcome to this week's edition of the Week in Triathlon. Let's roll that intro and get stuck into this week's news. On top of the news this week is the announcement that was made last weekend of Alistair Brownlee's decision to go long for the 2017-2018 season. What that effectively means is that he's primarily targeting the Ironman 70.3 World Championship that will be held in Chattanooga, Tennessee in 2017. And then following that race, he'll make his decision whether or not to shoot for Kona. But he's still keeping his options open as far as being able to compete at the Tokyo Olympic Games in 2020. However, it must be noted, and as many other athletes have proven in the past, that once you step from um, from Olympic racing up to 70.3, the, you're using largely the same type of energy systems within the human body. So this, to step back down from 70.3 back down to Olympic racing is entirely possible, as has been proven by Javier Gomez Noya and a number of other top athletes as well. However, once you make the step from Olympic up to full iron distance racing, you're needing to train a completely different energy system within the body. You need to be training your, your system to be a lot more efficient at burning fat for fuel than pure glycogen stores, is, which is what you're needing to be able to get through for an Olympic distance event. So consequently, when you, once you've made the step all the way up to full iron distance racing, it is incredibly difficult to make the step back down to Olympic distance racing. I'm talking at elite level here. At age group level, you can switch between the two relatively easily because you're not pushing your body to that absolute breaking point limit as what you would be doing in Olympic level racing. So once, so should Alistair be making the, the step from 70.3 up to full iron distance racing, I seriously doubt whether or not he'll be able to convert his body's energy systems back to be able to be competitive at the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. That's my personal take on that matter. And moving right on ahead to the world of Ironman racing. Ironman has announced three new events for the 2017 calendar. Two of those events are 70.3s and one of them is a an event to replace one of the three full distance Ironmans that have been summarily cancelled for the 2017 season. And the two 70.3s that are new onto the list will be Edinburgh, Scotland on the 2nd of July and there will be another 70.3 in Brazil on the 6th of August. The full Ironman event that's been added to the, to the 2017 calendar, you must, must be aware that will only be qualification for the 2018 Kona, but at the 2017, new 2017 event is in, at Mar de Plata in Argentina and that takes place on the 2nd of December 2017. And moving right on ahead to the world of the Challenge Family. Short piece of news there is that there is nothing new on the Challenge Family website in the form of news at all for this week. Neither is there anything at all of any significance whatsoever coming forth from the world of Xterra. And that brings us full circle, all the way back around to the world of the ITU. And the only piece of news to come out of the ITU this week is that Marisol Casado of Spain has been re-elected to an unprecedented third consecutive term as president of the ITU. Marisol Casado, you must remember, is a member of the IOC as well. And what does this mean, effectively? Well, what this meant, effectively, is... That firstly, let's, let's take a look at what happened as far as the election is concerned. Marisol Casada, in the election, was up against nobody whatsoever. So she was re-elected to president of the ITU completely unopposed. But this didn't make life any easier for Marisol or the ITU at all, because Tom Brightspark had the good, good mind to have a look at the ITU's constitution. And in terms of the ITU's constitution, no person is allowed to serve more than two terms 
as president of the ITU, much the same as what you see in the constitution of many countries, like, say, for instance, um, the United States has a similar, um, similar clause within the U.S. Constitution prohibiting more than two terms as president of the USA, so the same type of thing applied to the ITU as well. So before Marisol Casado could be inaugurated as president of the ITU for a third consecutive term, the ITU had to first organize a hasty committee meeting to vote on a very important matter of altering the constitution of the ITU in order to be able to inaugurate Mar Marisol Casado. Now, to my mind personally, it sounds the smacks of more that, like something that would be coming out of a semi-despotic African uh, failing state rather than a prestigious international sporting federation. But that's just my take on the matter and having come from an experience of having lived in an African country for a large number of years, I can attest to the fact that where I'm getting my feelings from. But that's my take on the matter personally. You might have completely a completely different take on the matter. And as far as that's concerned, feel free to post your comments, questions, criticisms in the comment section down below. Give this video a thumbs up, especially if you like my new type of out and about uh, reporting for the week in triathlon. And very importantly, if you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button that's down there. And last but by no means least, until the two of us meet again, stay carved up for the win. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Coach Ever. Up next.